Hello and welcome to another edition of Sadler's TV. We're here in the very lavish 1888 lounge at the Banksy Stadium and as you can see I've got two very special guests with me for today's show. First and foremost, Walsall's top marksman from last season, Tom Bradshaw. Tom, good to have you with us. Alongside him, the midfield maestro who's on fire in the goal scoring department so far this year, Sam Mantum. Sam, good to have you with us as well. Um, Tom, if I can start with you, lots to get through, chaps. So, um, Tom, 20 goals last season. You started this year where you left off. It's been a good start all round. Yeah, it has. Uh, obviously, I was happy with the way last season went for me personally. Um, and obviously that that brings um, added pressure onto this season in terms of a lot of a lot of fans and a lot of clubs expect you to to kick off straight away and it, sometimes it's not as easy uh, it's not as easy as that but um, that, thankfully I managed to get obviously the the three at Forest which kickstarted me on then I've managed to follow up with the the South End goal so hopefully um, hopefully there'll be more to come. Mm. Is, is Walsall and Tom Bradshaw just a good fit? They both just suit each other. Um, well, I'd like I'd like to think so. Um, I mean, for me personally, the like I say the whole setup from um, like I say, I've said before, the players, the coaches, um, the gaff, it, it fits me perfectly in terms of it's quite a relaxed atmosphere. But everyone's very professional and know know their roles that they've got in the team. Um, and like I say, for, for me, I, I I love that atmosphere. I don't like it too well. It, it, football's always pressured, but when when you bring that relaxed atmosphere into the game, it's uh, it's it's something that I like. Mm. You obviously made the move across from Shrewsbury, bit of rivalry between the two. But did you always have that belief that if you had a run of games, if someone believed in you as a manager, that that you would score goals? That's something that I've always said. I've said it to uh, whoever's asked me about uh, belief as a strike. I've always said, if, if I get a good run of games, um, then I'll then I'll get a lot of goals. Um, it was I mean, obviously before coming here. I never really got an extended run in the team. I was in and out, and any any strike or even any player will tell you it's it's hard to get consistent performances when you're constantly in and out of the team. Um, but like I said, I mean, the, cause since coming here, the gaffs give me well as much uh, playing time as I could hope for, and thankfully I've managed to um, repay him with goals. Mm, of course, you were trolled by a little hamstring injury last season. Just give us an idea of, of the work you've been doing with John Whitney throughout the summer and, and into the new campaign, just to try and minimise the games that you, that you miss with the club. Yeah, obviously it was it was quite a tough season last season for me, obviously with, with the hamstring issues. Um, but we we started to put things into place towards the end of last season in terms of we went to um, uh, Manchester University mm -hmm. to get basically an insole in my in my in my right foot to balance my legs out uh, because I had a leg length discre discrepancy on my mm -hmm. right one. So basically, I was walking around in circles. <laughs> um, but no, that we 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 got that sorted. Um, and put various things into in, into place like uh, strengthening programs, balancing programs, um, and even things just like Kato. I mean, if if you see me on a Saturday, I'll I'll always wear Kato for my hamstrings. Now, more more so for myself, I think it's just more of a a mental thing really. But it's it's all it's all gone to aid basically. I mean, hopefully minimising the risk of doing doing my hamstrings again. Mm, Sam, unfortunately, last season you knew what it was like to to watch from the sidelines. Great to see you back this year. Um, how good does it feel to be getting a, a run of games again? and feeling fit and that. Yeah, it's it's one of the best feelings when you when you know you're fully fit and you and you can play play with a bit of freedom, you've got nothing worrying you. Um obviously last season I missed a big, big chunk of the season. Um I'm hoping never to to live that again. So um yeah, a great start to this season and um, we look really good and can't wait to kick on now. Mm. As Tom sort of alluded to, you, you also had an active summer. It wasn't quite an off-season for mm. you either. Has that helped you in the way that you've started this season and came flying out the traps? Yeah, well, I always had a burning desire to, to make sure I come back for this pre-season in, in the best shape I could. Um, I only went away for a week right at the end before pre-season, mm. so most of the time I was spent in the gym and, and, and doing my own, my own programme, um, working on weaknesses and, and make them into strength so on a game day I can it's not it's not going to affect me in any way um, yeah it, it couldn't have gone any better to be fair um, did, did a lot of really good work with, with Dean Harris and John Whitney and um, can only thank them for that mm, you, you speak to any footballer and they'll tell you that being out injured is the most frustrating and an annoying time uh, in the profession was there ever any doubts did you ever doubt yourself that you'd come back and reach the heights that you had done in the previous year not really, no. I know I'm relatively young, and um, it's not like I've, I'm coming to the end of my career. I've, I've got loads of years to to come, so um, I knew I was always going to get back to a stage where I could I could show people what I'm all about. And it was only two years ago where I won Player of the Season, so um, looking to try and emulate that again. 
Um, but yeah, he's ne never really dated myself because I'm quite a strong-willed person and always believe in myself. Um, and that's something that I look up to. Mm. It's been a, a, big, a great start from the boys. Um, three wins from four and unbeaten start to the campaign in, in league and cup. You must be thrilled with, with how it's gone, brothers. Yeah, definitely. Um, especially considering last year we we had such a slow start, a start, mm. start to the campaign. I think it was I think it was six or seven games before we got our first league win. Um, so obviously to start start this season by obviously winning three and, and and drawing one and bear in mind three three of them games have been away from home. Mm. Um, it's been it's been a brilliant start, but it's something that we've always knew that we could achieve um, and can still can still achieve is that consistency. And if we can keep that going into the season, um, then there's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't be where we are. Looking back on that Rochdale win, I mean, is that as hard an earned victory as you'll find? I think for um, I, th I think for us that's our best result out mm -hmm. of the. I mean, obviously, Forest away is a, is, is well. a big one, but yeah. in, in terms of the league, it's it's a very tough place to go. Rochdale as, as they, we showed last year. I mean, going there losing four nil, um, it was it, it is a tough place to go, and teams will struggle going there this season. But I think that just shows the character that we've got in the team um, to go there and get the three points. Much has been made of, of systems and tactics. Um, the gaffers obviously switched it up between games. As a, as a midfield man, he looks to get forward, and, and as an attacker, do you thrill? There's more of a, a potent attacking threat in the side this year. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was something that we. Um, we 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 wanted to do going into the new season. I think we were solid defensively last year. I think we had 22, 23 mm -hmm. clean sheets. Um, but somewhere we didn't quite hit the heights was scoring enough goals. Um, and I think that we've we've addressed that this season. And I think any any fan that's been to the games uh, will see that the amount of chances we're creating. And I think is that is that is, how many goals? Have we? It's it's about nine goals mm. in four games. It's 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 a good return. Mm. Um, and if we keep creating the chances that we are, then there's no reason why that should dry up. Some year, of course, on the on the score sheet. I think it was a little deflection on the goal at <laughs> at Spotland. But do you feel you've, they've been given a bit more of a license to get forward and, and pose a threat to the opposition in the box? Yeah, well. I'm, most of my career, when I'm playing youth, youth team, I've always looked to get goals and, and always looked to join the attacks and create goals. So um, I, I've always had it in me. Um, it's just tough from a deeper role to, to always get in the box and, and try and create things because you, you're always looking for that safety behind you. So mm -hmm. um, this new formation and a new way of playing uh, gives certainly gives me more freedom to get forward and um, a license to help brothers and, and remain and people like that to, to try and chip in with goals and. And Brad, as for you to pick up a first senior career hat trick as well this season, that must have been a pretty special moment at the City Ground. Yeah, it was. Um, obviously, I've, I've got quite a few braces in my career, mm -hmm. and every time you get to a brace, you're thinking, "Well, if I can get one more, it. it's going to be my hat trick." Yeah. Um, but obviously, I mean, to, to to get the penalty in the 95th minute, I was as I was I was standing over the spot, I was thinking, "I'm never going to get a better chance to score a hat trick," especially. Uh, at, at Forest away and to send my team through to the next round I thought I'll, I'll never get a be better chance than this so I was confident stepping up to the penalty um, I did thankfully I did a lot of practice uh, the day before the game um, and yeah I mean I was, I was I knew where I was going to put it and um, because of mo mo modern goalkeeping I mean they, they tend to obviously look into where you go on penalties and I think I went left about f five or six times previous so I knew if I hit the target going right there's a good chance that the keeper's going to be going the other way yeah. so um, so yeah, I mean, luckily it went in, and it, it was a very special moment for me and my family. I think I think the gaffer said after the game that he gave you a little bit of advice because he told you where he used to stick his penalty. Is that, <laughs> is that true? He tells me that on a daily basis. <laughs> so he, was, uh, <laughs> he tends to uh, well, I, I, I don't know whether it was uh, his advice, but I told the gaffer that I, what way I was going to go be, before the game if if I did get a penalty. Mm -hmm. Um, and I stuck to my word and luckily I put it, put it in the net. But Sammy, it looks like it suits the players we have, the different systems and the fact that we are looking to go and win games, as we did last year, but certainly creating more chances. Do you feel that when you're on the pitch that we are creating more this year? Yeah, most definitely. Um, as you say, we scored nine goals in, in four games now and it took us a couple of months to get mm -hmm. to that stage last mm -hmm. season. So um, I, can, I think you can see the work that we're doing in training, um, all the belief that the players are taking from the gaffer and, and the coaching staff to, to try and express themselves and at the end of the day we want to we want to entertain the fans and and make them get off their seats um, they come to support us and we want, that's what we want to do at the end of the day so um, yeah it's a great start and we're looking to build on that and we can't wait to score more and just very briefly there was quite a poignant moment when you scored and dedicated that goal to your late great grandfather was that quite an emotional time for you? yeah well because it had been so long since I'd 
I'd actually scored. Um, it was always playing in my mind, and um, I was in. I remember in, I was in a brace um, when he when he passed away and not playing and couldn't really move. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a, it was a sad moment, but um, every time I spoke to him, he was always talking football and always always on about my career and stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, it was it was a really nice moment and something that I can I can dedicate to. Um, we're going to take a short break here on Sadler's TV. Join us for the second half of the uh, the show where we speak to Tom and Sam about their rise through from grassroots football to the professional game. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to uh, Sadlers at TV. Tom Bradshaw and Sam Mantham, our guests for today's show. Uh, guys, I just want to talk to you about your progression as footballers from the sort of grassroots level all the way through to the professional game. Sam, if I could start with you this time. You obviously enjoyed a footballing education at, at West Bromwich Albion. How difficult do you think it is for players at Premier League clubs to make that jump up to the first team? Yeah, I'd say it's very difficult now as well. Um, more money in the game and you see it now where the managers, foreign managers bring foreign players in um, from overseas and for a lot of money and when they bring them sort of players over it doesn't really give any any young chance. Um, so it's, it really is, it's, it's tough now, it's tough industry for young players at, at, at big clubs. Um, if I had any advice I'd, I'd say you, you just can't try and leave and play play games, that's mm. the most most important thing for, for any player. Um, get some games under your belt and We've got a few lads here who've, who've, who've witnessed that and seen it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's very tough. Um, as I say, a lot of money now, and um, managers usually don't trust the young lads when they when they can buy players and who come over. So, um, yeah, it's I couldn't I couldn't have asked for any more at West Brom. Um, it was a very good upbringing and I learnt a hell of a lot there, and um, can't really thank the club enough because. Um, they actually give me give me a few chances, and um, unfortunately, uh, new managers come in and, and things change. Mm. Obviously, you enjoyed a few loan spells during your time there. Here being being one of them, do you think that that enhances young players going out there, experiencing first team football on a regular basis? Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, there's nothing nothing beats playing on a Saturday, playing on a Tuesday night under the floodlights. Um, there's nothing worse than training all week, and, and you get to a Saturday and you're not involved in the squad and. And you're training on a Sunday and back in on the Monday, and, and it's all the same again. Um, I had that for a, for a year under Rodgson, but um, and eventually got a chance to come out and learn to Warsaw, and uh, I've never looked back. Mm. Um, this club's obviously got a, a quite a, a deep tradition now, bringing through young players through the system. Um, do you think there's anything that that Premier League teams can learn from the likes of ourselves and crew and, and the ones that really invest in in young players? Yeah, well, as I said. Said before, there's a, there's a lot of money in the game now, and um, you're gonna have to be a very special talent to, to come through the ranks now, um, because because there's a lot there's a lot of money, so teams aren't gonna aren't gonna trust the young lads to, to come in when they can get better players in who are who are more experienced, um, and the fans want to see big signings. So um, you would like to see teams take a chance on on more youngsters and. And give them a give them a chance to to show what they're all about um, because that's the only way you learn really. But um, the lower you get down, you, you can see that the more more young lads get more chances, and um, I think that's the way the way it's got to be done as you, as you get down. Brad, it's coming on to you. Um, your time as a young player at Aberystwyth Town, but I believe it started slightly before then at Wrexham. Yeah, it was. I mean, obviously uh, living in Tower on the coast of Wales, I mean, there wasn't much opportunity to play for big clubs and, um, and, and like, like I say, to probably have the opportunity that uh, Sambo and uh, a lot of other lads do that are in, the, in and around the cities. Um, so I, I was just playing for my local team up until well, uh, until I was about 40, 14, mm. uh, and then I got the chance to go on trial at Wrexham, um, of which I was there for a, a, a good twelve months on trial. Um, I, was, I was top goal scorer there whilst whilst I was there, but unfortunately, you drop that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, I got released, so <laughs> I, I wasn't bitter at all. <laughs> so obviously, yeah, I, I went um, ended up going back to uh, back to town and then um, played for my fairly local team, Aberystwyth, um, which was which was a good which was uh, a, a good academy in Wales mm. at the time. Um, and I just went back to enjoying enjoying football, enjoying myself. And to be fair, they they, they gave me a chance and. Um, 
I, I, I enjoyed progressing there. I learned I learned a lot there and it also allowed me just to enjoy my my, my childhood almost at the mm. same time, which I know speaking to a lot of lads that were <laughs> at, at big clubs, even from an early age of 13, 14, it almost takes almost that social element away from you when, when you're that when, when you're at a big club that young mm. because you, you're constantly going to training camps and even going abroad, it's, it makes you grow up very quickly. Mm. Um, like I say, from, from the people I've spoke to. So in a way, I actually, I appreciate the, the start that I had into football and um, uh, and, and it's something that, that I'm thankful for. Mm, so you was playing men's football from a, a relatively early age. Do you think that helped be the, the hustle and bustle of, of full-time men's football? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I was playing, um, I, say, I, I played uh, six months in the Aberystwyth Reserve side, which was men's football. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I had uh, about two months, which was about five or six games in, uh, in in the first team there, and it was it was a massive help for me. Obviously, as a, as a sixteen year old, you you're not the biggest, um, but playing against big big men who just try and out muscle you and stuff, it was something that helped me. It's helped me throughout my entire career. So obviously, going from that into into youth football, which I did when I signed for Shrewsbury, mm. um, physically I felt like I could. Um, I could cope with the demands a lot more, which allowed me to play my game, um, which in turn allowed me to score goals, which luckily uh, enabled me to get my first pro contract. Mm. Some players seem to be joining academies younger and younger nowadays. How much of it is about just enjoying your football when you're at 9, 10, 11 years old? Yeah, well, I can remember when I was 9 and 10, um, actually at, at Walsall, um, on the on the Astro turf at the back of the stadium. Um, it, it's... When you're that age, it's all about enjoyment. You you can't you can't take it too serious because it's a, it's a bit of fun at the end of the day. Um, obviously, when you when you get a little bit older and it starts to become a job, then you can take it more serious. But um, when you're that young, you, you you learn most when you when you enjoy it and and you, and you play with freedom. So um, you see things now where all the parents are shouting on the pitch. Uh, um, it's not great to see, but um, they all want for the, the best for their for their kids at the end of the day. But um, it's crucial that they enjoy the, enjoy the game and, and try and learn as much as possible. And just how highly do you rate the, the clutch of young players at this club, your teammates? You know, you look at the likes of Rico Henry, Matt Preston, Reese Flanagan, Kieran Morris. There seems to be a group of them all coming through at the same time. Just how talented are they? Yeah, very very much so. Um, it's, it's, even, they've kicked on this year big time. Um, you, you look at the likes of Rico, who's only just turned 18, I think, and he's an outstanding talent. Um, Someone that the club will club, club will look to play more in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he certainly gives Andy Taylor a lot to think about. Um, but now Tars are scored off. So <laughs> it's a rare reminder. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's, it's exciting times for the club, and, and there's, there's still more coming up through the ranks. Uh, you speak to Neil Woods, the, the head of youth, and, and he's excited for, for what's to come. And hopefully, we can produce more players of that quality. Is it daunting for you both that you? Sort of early to mid twenties, and yet seem to be senior players in the club already. I don't. Think, I don't think there's many clubs where the likes of me and Sam are classed as senior players, really. <laughs> but um, but no, I think that's a great. I think we've got a great balance of we we've got a young squad, um, but we've also got a lot of experience in in, in even as as young players like myself and Sambo we've probably got over three hundred games between us. So it's it's a lot of it's a lot of games um, for for players that's that's fairly young, and that's that goes throughout the squad. So. Um, like I say, although we're young, we're we're quite an experienced team, and games like like yesterday don't particularly daunt us because we know we can go there if we do if we do what we do well. Um, then we're more than more than capable of getting getting the wins. And you talk about that striking that balance between you know, youthfulness and experience. How key then does that make the likes of Adam Chambers, the skipper, and, and Jim O'Connor at the back just to help rear these young players through? Yeah, it's it, like I say, it's although although we are experienced, you always need an experience mm-hmm. uh, and even more experienced head like mm-hmm. likes of Jimmy and uh, and Skip and, and and players like that. You, it's vital that you have that balance because. If, if anything, more of a uh, a vocal a, a vocal standpoint. I mean, during a game, sometimes you, we might need to change change the point of attack or change uh, the formation. Or now sometimes that can't be done from from the side. Sometimes that's got to be done internally. And by having them more um, experienced and older players, they're generally the ones that tend to do that. So mm. it's 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 people that you need in the team. Mm, the mood in the camp. Obviously high at the moment. Coventry then on Saturday. How much are you looking forward to hosting a, a near rival down mm. here at the Banks? Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Um, they're flying high at the minute. Um, should bring a, a decent set of fans, so the atmosphere should be should be rocking. Uh, considering we've had a decent start as well. 
Um, we can't we can't wait for the game. We're looking forward to it. Confidence is is really high at the minute. Um, and as you say, it's a top of the table clash so early on, but um, could be crucial come the end of the season. So it's one we're looking to go in to win. Brad is looking to mark the score sheet again against the Sky Blues on Saturday. <laughs> I'd like to think. I mean, my fa- my family were giving me some stick yesterday for not scoring. So <laughs> a mini uh, drought, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my uncle was saying, I, I, I can't believe you've gone the whole game without scoring. So, so, uh, but no, it's it's something that myself as, as as a striker. I mean, it was great to get the result the result yesterday. But as a striker, I'm always wanting to score mm. goals and. Um, Every, every time that I don't score in the game, it makes me even hungrier to score in the next game to to uh, help 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 the team get the get the points. And just very briefly, I know it's still early days, but it's it's nice mentally to look at the table and see us riding high up there, isn't it? Yeah, well, I say we're only three games in, but seven seven points is a is a, is a decent return. Um, we we couldn't have really asked for a better start. Um, had a had a tough game uh, opening day against Oldham. That that was a. A tough start, but but they're not a bad team, and then to go away to two tough tough away places um, and get six points is is a great return. And um, yeah, it's, it's nice to to see the the table on Sky Sports Sky Sports News and see Morsel, um <coughs> near the top of it. Um, mm. And hopefully, come the end of the season, we can we can stay there. Mm. Well, thanks for joining us today, Sam. Brothers, you too. Good luck uh, on Saturday. Thank you. Um, that's all we've got time for here on Sadlers TV. Of course, you can stay up to date with all the clubs uh, going on on social media and on sadlers.co.uk. Join us next time.